what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about where to find qualified good workers whenever you want them. If you don't know who I am, my name is Lane Boland. I run remodelcommanders.com. I serve as the chief operating officer of CQC Home. During my time there, I led that team from eight to 14 million in sales and grew while improving net profits by 600%. So back in March, CQC Home out of Raleigh, Durham, you know, which is in the hottest real estate market in the country right now, really struggled to find qualified labor to break past 8 million in sales. I mean, more money didn't work, relationships didn't work, giving time off didn't work. Meanwhile, we had a $9 million backlog and a $10,000 a week production rate. So schedules were getting delayed, clients were getting pissed, real relationships were getting super concerned. I mean, this was about to get bad. We and start adding more qualified trades and PMs to the mix. So we flipped this problem on its head and looked at it from the trades perspective and pulling a page out of Charlie Munger from Berkshire Hathaway's book, I asked myself, what would I do to break this business? In other words, if I wanted all my, if I want more qualified employees, what would I do to make all my employees quit and only ever hire monkeys again? What would I do? So I wrote down all those answers. Then I looked at it from the other perspective. Let's do the the opposite of that. If I was a tradesman, what would make my dream employer? And so these answers I boiled down into this framework You're about what you're looking at specifically to compete with other employers. And you know what? I mean, guys, it worked. We use this to grow our team to handle an extra 6 million in annual work in just six months. Crazy. Anyhow, let's run through this. On the left side, this is a continuum, guys. This is not binary. It's like a continuum of absolute suck to absolute amazing. And I want you to use this framework as a way to evaluate yourself versus your competitors for the same labor supply. Make sense? So on the left side, things like having a lot of bad reviews, you know, winging your management. Your job is just a job. It's just a gig for your workers. You only provide on the job training and that comes in the form of telling them how they're fucked up and everything they do is wrong. You pay quote fair market wages. In other words, what you think is fair, not what the market's saying is, is going to win you the worker. Your guys are on call, meaning your work is sporadic, right? There's no rhyme or reason. There's no schedule to the starts and ends. So the guys like you don't know where your next meal is coming from. You make your subs, in this case, subs specifically, accept payment terms like net seven, net 14, net 30. I mean, I've even seen employers make W2 guys on piecework weight, you know, net seven for their paychecks. I mean, guys, when you hear of that, ask who is doing that because that company is now your target to pick off their best labor because their workers are not happy. So if you're using subs, making your subs figure out bids and measurements before even, you know, invest time into producing bids and measurements before even winning the job. I mean, they don't have time for that. And also winging your construction documents and having like no set process for your change orders, which creates just fucking chaos on the job site. And that chaos leads to anxiety. That anxiety leads your employees to looking to go somewhere else. So let's look at on the other side, what would be like the ideal? Having tons of good reviews, in fact, only good reviews. Employing what I call mission, not what I call, what the army calls mission command which is whenever you want somebody to do something, you tell them the task, what I want done, purpose, why I want it done, method, how I want it done, and end state, what it looks like when it's finished. Having a formal career for your people coming to work for you, meaning like they know I come in and I get promoted these many times for doing these different activities for this length of time to this particular standard. Does that make sense? Having a formalized onboarding and training process to get these people on board into a positive culture in your company to where they can make a contribution and also to see how y'all work because everybody does everything differently. And so we want to take their trade knowledge and adapt it to the way you want things done, but do that in a formal structured process where they're working under supervisor's direct oversight. And for example, at the end of the day, you give them one or two things to do differently, to work on, to do better, right? And, and we'll get in that later. You pay top dollar. In other words, in order to pay top dollar, you need to charge top dollar because there is no magic money tree. So you got to figure out a way to charge top dollar so you can pay top dollar. And when you pay top dollar and you have all these things on the right, like you literally have a line out the door of people wanting to work for you. Hey there, if you're getting value from these videos, could I ask you to click the like button and match smash? Just subscribe to the channel.
having a guaranteed work schedule year round for both your employees and your subs. If you got subs, consider a small cash down and a weekly draw. I mean, we buy all the materials, so there's no reason for a particular deposit, but when a sub commits to your job, maybe give them a little something to solidify that commitment and help out their cash flow. And by paying them weekly, they're not coming out of pocket to pay payroll to work for you, which makes you a way more attractive general contractor than the other dickheads. Doing done for you bids. This is like super secret sauce at CQC where we'll pull the takeoff for the trade using our production rates based off of observing our guys versus what we know to be national averages to come up with the amount of time that project should take. And then from there, extrapolating what this is going to cost that sub to work for us and then giving them a fair margin. You know, something like times that by 1.2 or 1.3 at the most or more if it's a specialty contractor or a highly valued one. And so then we send down that package to our list one at a time of subs in that trade. So it's, hey, Bob, this is what we're paying. Here's the scope. Here's the takeoff. Here's the production rate. Here's the math on what we're going to pay you or here's what we're going to pay you. Yes or no? They say no. You ask, hey, what would you do this for? And then move on down the line until you get a yes. And if you get a yes, everybody that says no goes to the bottom of the list. It's a beautiful system. Gets you about three, four points grippage every single time. But having those done for you bids, that subcontractor, he doesn't have to spend four hours per bid packet coming up with the math to make sure he doesn't get clipped. And over time, it'll build trust with you. And like, even if you're just doing the math for them, you're compressing their time from four hours to maybe 30 minutes to an hour to verify the packet and say yes or no. I mean, that's a huge value add for your subs out there. And then having very tight construction documents. And what I mean by that is you have actual plans that have specs and your specs dictate means and material for every single trade assembly. And then for your change orders, having an actual written change order process that both the client knows and the project manager knows and the subcontractors know. So the subs know that when a change order happens, cha-ching, we're all getting paid. So guys, this is on a continuum of suck to awesome. I mean, if you want to use this as a checklist when you're evaluating your competitors to see what they suck at versus what they're good at and what you suck at, what you're good at, and first fix what you suck at and then make you the best at what you're good at in the market, you're never going to want for labor ever again. All right, guys, be good. Inside the notes, you'll find a link to our free exclusive group for remodel business owners where we post daily tactical training to improve your bottom line. So go check it out.